Hi everyone, I'm Susan with Pigtail Quilting and Stitching. Here's number six on the videos, and it's gonna be kind of a short one because I'm gonna be leaving on a trip pretty soon to visit my son in California. And I hope to have some videos out there as well um, with some maybe a little bit of quilting and um, stitching, maybe even some uh, field trips. So I hope you'll watch the next one also. But this one is going to be uh, more quilts uh, decorations in um, an extra guest room that is beside my 30s room that I did in the previous video. So I um, hope you come along with me and I'll show you um, again how I uh, decorate with my quilts, a lot of layering, and also how I store my batting and, and uh, some of my extra quilts that I used during the year for like the holidays. So let's get started. coming down to my other guest room that's next door to the 30s room. You can kind of see um, I got the quilt back that I was telling you last week, the little scrappy star, and I kind of placed that in the high chair in that guest room. I'll do more on that a little later, but let's go into this room. I think I'll talk about the quilts on the bed. Now this quilt that's first here is um, called America's Garden Quilt. And it was a quilt kit that I got um, a few years ago and it's made the fabrics by In the Beginning. And it's fabric from uh, the flowers of all the states, the 50 states. And it's kind of a granny squared um, pattern. But it was really fun working with all the different fabrics and seeing the state flowers of all the different states. And I had some extra fabric, so I made a pillow out of the Montana Bitterit flower. But it made a nice size quilt. This is a queen size. And then on top of the bed um, is some grandmother's flower garden pieces, actually my mother pieced, hand pieced. And uh, my sister and I, uh, we shared the blocks and then we were gonna each make, put them together to have 
um, a quilt. And I ended up putting mine in two quilts. So I have one over the bed and I, I just used uh, uh, applique them on the background and then sash them. So these were kind of a nice treasure to have. And then over the foot of the bed, there's another more blocks that I can make. I made another quilt, so I can pass them on to both my my uh, my kids. Can each have one? Their grandmother flowers that she made. And then over here on this other one is one that I made and uh, used the traditional way but it was machine quilted, uh, quilted. I did not um, hand quilt that. But that was also a fun way to make some quilts. And these were made with a, uh, a stamp by Kate is the maker of that one and her pattern. And it, she uh, has a way of um, you stamp the strips of fabric and the quarter inch is already figured in and you still you still have to hand piece them but it sure uh, makes them very accurate and then moving around the room kind of have an old desk and that is another grandmother's flower garden quilt but that is kind of a vintage one I picked up um, I believe it was not an not an uh, estate sale, but I think it was like a rummage sale type thing that I picked that up. And this one was hand quilted. So I have some little vintage Dick and Jane books that I like to collect. Remind me of my childhood. Just moving around the room and kind of see how I can get a lot of layered quilts in here. And then uh, going over by the nightstand, I have some of my uh, cross stitch, one of my beginning cross stitch. It's a uh, Lori Holt from her postcard, her stitch cards. And then this, this picture of this little bunny was painted by my son when he was in elementary school. I thought he was such a cute little guy, this little bunny. <clears throat> and then down below, I have a, kind of a vintage mixing bowl, or like a batter bowl, I believe it is. And then some a little book collection of some favorite children's books. And then you can see also I have another quilt ladder. This one's white, painted white, and it it's, uh, holds you know four quilts. And I have um, some quilts. The bottom quilt is not is a vintage quilt that's hand quilted. I'll get a little closer. And the other ones are ones that I have made previously. Go over there and slowly. Re see some scrappy log cabin those two quilts are exactly the same pattern one is just with uh, two fabrics and the other one has different fabrics with a variety of colors and then here is my Teak. And I've heard this pattern is a teak kind of pattern. I also heard it's like a kimono pattern, kimono pattern, or um, the women's temperance also. I'm not quite sure, um, but I know it was from the, this was um, made in the 30s, I believe. 
the fabrics are from the 1930s. So I'll move over here and on this dresser, see I have more of the Lori Holt stitch card, a little chick. It's kind of what I learned to um, cross stitch on, still learning. And I am gonna show you how I sit and cross stitch, what I set up is to get how it's comfortable with a lap desk. And that one's gonna be on a very near future video too. I just, um, um, trying to get everything organized that I like to, like to video. And I also have um, a little hanky with tatting on it. Some little vintage um, yellow pot, um, uh, little, you know, vintage yellow um, this McCoy. And I think. Um, of those others are also and on um, the bottom is some leftover uh, flowers grandmother's flower garden squares that I had that I just um, made into a table runner for this dresser and in this vase is this is um, like a vintage uh, dresser scarf that a friend gifted me. So now you can kind of see the whole view. And just like my 30s room, you, you really can get a lot of quilts when you layer them or use the foot um, the footboard of your, if you have a bed frame, you can fold them. Or chairs on the back of a chair. it up and show you how I store some of my quilts and my bedding. Okay so here is inside the closet and I can see I have a roll of it's a new roll of Hobbs 8020 and I have that kind of in one of my um, like little washer stands that I use. Sometimes I put quilts in it, but right now I have that roll of batting and some pieces. And over here is a all cotton bat that is very thin, but sometimes I like to use it for uh, a baby quilt or um, some adoptive bear quilts, which I will talk about that next month. That's kind of uh, what our guild is involved with in making teddy bears and little small quilts for the children in the hospital emergency room. And then up there on the other shelf with some guest pillows is the last roll um, of this big roll that was in, in the um, washer um, display. The, laundry display here is um, what I have left of that bat that's folded over. That's an 8020 also. And then over here is where I keep my extra quilts that I'm not um, using right now that aren't out on display. And like, like I change those out sometimes. There's my 4th of July quilts up there. Um, you can see I have some pillowcases that I've made also. There's Christmas quilts. This, the last two shelves have Christmas quilts in them.
So even though this is just a guest room too, I try can use it to store my quilts and my batting and then still have room if a guest comes and I can move that over and I can hang things on there. So anyway, I will shut this closet and uh, just take you around the room one more time. So thank you everyone for watching and I hope uh, to do another one soon in, during my trip to California. Um, to be show you some ocean and the coastline um, along with some quilting. So if you like this, hope you subscribe, hope to continue to do more and thank you all for watching.